everyone, Josie Joy here and welcome back to my channel. I am the creator and founder of Josie Joy's Craft Nook. And today we will be talking about um, yarn fibers. Okay, So there are really two main categories of yarn fibers and that is synthetic yarns and animal based yarns. Okay? So synthetic yarns are anything that is man made. Okay? Anything that was made in a factory. Animal fibers are anything, or natural fibers are anything that comes, that's natural, that was not man-made. Okay, so first we are going to talk about the synthetic fibers. I also read an article about this and it will be linked in the description because I cannot go through all the yarns that it lists. Um, and so if you want more information, it will be linked down there. We will be going over nine different uh, yarns, three for each category, but um, so yeah. So let's continue on. So the first one we are talking about is synthetics and the first yarn is acrylic. So acrylic is the most common fiber or the most common yarn you will find. Every store, no matter which one you go in, will have acrylic. It is the best yarn to start with if you are a beginner. It is the yarn I started with. Red, I started with Red Heart Super Saver Yarn from Walmart. You can find it at Walmart. I think you might be able to find it at Michael's. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if you can find it at Joann's because I never shopped there. I know for a fact you can't find it at Hobby Lobby. Um, they have their own brands. I think Yarn Bee is a brand and I love this yarn is their brand. Um, and they have some other brands. Um, but it is a good, great beginner, um, beginner starter yarn. Um, my favorite acrylic yarn is I Love This Yarn because it is actually softer than Red Heart Super Saver yarn. Um, it is, acrylic it tends to be stretchy, it has great stitch definition, it's very versatile. So you can use it for practically anything. You can use it for um, accessories, hats, um, gloves, scarves, blankets, clothing, um, and groomies. Pretty much the only thing you cannot use it for is stuff like um, cleaning supplies, stuff like um, if you want to use a, uh, make a duster to dust something or um, a, a dish rag or a pot holder. Um, and that's because it does not hold water. Acrylic does not hold water. It just sits there and gets damp and gross. Um, it also cannot get hot. It will melt. And so you cannot put it in your dryer because it, there's a possibility it could melt. You also cannot iron it because there's a possibility it could melt. Um, it can't touch any, it can't go in the microwave. None of that, none of that. Um, if you are wondering if something is a natural fiber or a um, synthetic fiber, um, I've heard a trick you can do, I've never actually tried it, but I've heard a trick you can do is you can take a match and you can hold it to the end of the yarn. And if it melts, if it burns, it melts, it is synthetic. And if it just burns and doesn't melt, it is natural. Um, acrylics tend to be a worse weight or me, uh, number four medium weight yarn. I will, in another video, I will talk about um, different weights of yarn. So those are really, that's really it for acrylic. The next one we're going to be talking about is chenille yarn. So chenille is what I use to make my plushies out of it. It's usually a number six bulky weight yarn. Um, it is soft. It is very plush. You can use it for amigurumis. Um, you can use it for beanies. You can use it for blankets. I'm currently making a blanket um, because it's so soft. Um, I also made a head warmer for winter and it is one of my favorite head warmers because it just keeps my, it just feels like velvet on my ears and it just keeps my ears nice and warm. Um, the um, downside to this yarn is it's extremely expensive. I think it's about $4.99 at Hobby Lobby, but it comes in like a little ball. Um, it, you can buy it at select Dollar Trees for about $1.25, but it's only about $65. Um, grams, which isn't a lot. Um, and then at Michael's, at Dollar Tree, and then at Joann's, I believe too, you can get a big thing for about 10 bucks. So it's not cheap yarn by any means, but it, but I do like working with it. 
Another um, downside is that uh, it's not a beginner friendly yarn. If you are a beginner, do not start with this yarn because it's hard to see the stitches because of the fluffiness of it. So, so I suggest that you um, are more of a pro um, at, before you start working with this yarn. Now the third acrylic yarn I am going to be talking about is polyester. Now I have worked with polyester, but not as much as the other two. And I usually have only worked with polyester blends. So a blend is when you take two or more different fibers and put them together. For, so for example, a label may say it is 25% bamboo and 75% acrylic or something. That is a blend. It is two different fibers put together. And sometimes there's a variety of reasons they do that. Sometimes it's cost effective um, to do that. It makes it cheaper. Sometimes they do that to make it softer, right? Um, and so that's all. So that's all that that it means. Um, I've never used a 100% polyester yarn. Um, Any time I've used polyester, it has been a blend, and I rarely ever use it. And so, um, so that's all I have for acrylic. So let's now move on to the natural fibers. Now, natural fibers are broken down to two categories. That is, animal fibers and plant fibers. Okay, and as the name suggests, animal fibers come from animals. Plant fibers come from plants. Okay, so we are going to talk about animal fibers first. So there are three types of yarn. The first that I'm, that I am going to be talking about. The first one is the most common. It's merino wool. I have worked with merino wool. I it is very difficult to work with, um, in my opinion, in my experience. Some people love it. Um, it is tough. It isn't that stretchy and it is very itchy. It does not have good stitch definition. It is very itchy. It's also very expensive. It's very difficult to find 100% merino wool. And when you do find it, it is very expensive. Um, and it is very itchy. And it is very, like, it peels and it's very fluff. It's very fluffy. Um, I don't personally like working with it. And I try to avoid working with it. Um, but there are some people who love it. I noticed that a lot of knitters love working with wool to each their own. Um, but the benefits of working with wool is that it, it insulates heat. It's like an insulation. And so it's great to, um, it's great to make winter things with it. So like beanies or gloves or scarves or anything like that to keep you warm because it insulates the heat. It makes you warm. And that's why people likes, likes to use it. The second one is alpaca wool. Alpaca wool comes from the animal, the alpaca. And it is, I've never actually used alpaca, but it is more expensive, so I've heard, than merino wool. It is harder to find than merino wool, um, and, but it is softer than merino wool. Um, but it does the same thing as merino wool. It insulates heat, and so it's good to use it to make gloves and hats and stuff like that. The third one is the most expensive one and the hardest to find, and that is cashmere. I've never worked with cashmere either, um, but it is expensive, but I've heard it's the softest. And if you want that luxurious feeling of, of that nice, silky, soft feeling, then try to find a yarn with cashmere in it, even if it's just a blend of cashmere. Do that. And now cashmere comes from goats, which I did not know until I read the article. Cashmere comes from goats. So that is done, with, uh, now we are done with the animal blends. Now let's move on to the, or the animal fibers. Now let's move on to the plant-based fibers. Now the plant-based fibers are more common than the animal plant-based fibers. The first one we are going to talk about is cotton. That is the most um, popular of the plant-based fibers is cotton. You can find it anywhere in a variety of colors. Um, you can find it in any store, it doesn't matter. You can also use it for anything. Most plant-based fibers are um, very lightweight, and so um, a lot of people like to use um, cotton to make, or any plant, any, any yarn that has plant-based fibers, they like to use it to make summer clothing, like cardigans or tank tops or 
summer hats and like the bucket hats and stuff or headbands and stuff like that right and so cotton is common I use cotton to make my amigurumis um, because it's not fuzzy it has great definition however if you have a problem with carpal tunnel and painting your hands which I'm already starting to have I would not suggest using that because it doesn't have a pull it, it doesn't have a very much pull it's very taut and so sometimes it really really hurts your hands um, and so there is that it is very difficult to find a cotton that is um, lower than a worsted weight yarn or higher than a worsted weight yarn most of them are a worsted weight yarn um, so um, and it also depends you know so I, I don't like um, shopping online for my yarn. Um, and there's two reasons for that. One is the shipping cost. I do not want to pay shipping. The second reason is, is I like to feel my yarn. So there are different feels for cotton. Some are more coarse and some are soft. So for example, the peaches and cream cotton is extremely coarse. And the reason that is, is because peaches and cream is meant for dishcloths and potholders. It's meant for utility stuff. And so it needs to be coarse so you can scrub those dishes. It needs to be coarse so you can put it in the microwave and heat up a bowl of soup. That's what, that's what it's meant for. Uh, but amigurumis, you want it to be soft. And so you want to find a soft cotton. So I personally like to use, same with clothing. You don't want a coarse cotton yarn to make a shawl or something, right? And so I usually use, um, I love this yarn from, or I love this cotton from Hobby Lobby because it's a very soft cotton yarn. In fact, I showed my mom this yarn and she's like, that's not cotton. I'm like, yes, this is cotton. This is 100% cotton. She's like, no way, that's not 100% cotton. That's acrylic. No, it is cotton. That's how soft uh, um, I love this cotton is. And it is perfect for amigurumi making. It has a ton of colors. It is just perfect for it. Um, and so that is cotton. The second one we are going to talk about is bamboo. I have used bamboo before, but I've only used it in bamboo blends. It is extremely shiny and soft to work with. Um, I would not suggest using it for amigurumi making because it's so soft. But um, I have used it to make like hats and stuff, and it's very, it's very pretty, and I really do like working with bamboo. And then the last one is actually I've never worked with and I've never seen in stores, I've only seen on like Amazon, and that is hemp. Yes, you can actually make yarn, um, you can actually get yarn with hemp in it. Um, and so that is all the fibers. It's synthetic fiber, animal-based fiber, and plant-based fiber. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. Come again soon.